My area of research is the tumour microenvironment, trying to understand how the malignant cells interact with the other cells that they recruit to help the cancer grow and spread, and also translating that into clinical trials. It's very important to me that we take our research to help patients, basically. The main disease that I focus on is a type of ovarian cancer called high-grade serous ovarian cancer, and that's what the Campbell Project attempts to recreate. Tumours are not just a ball of malignant cells out of control, but half of any cancer is a whole load of other cells that should be normal, that are recruited by the cancer and corrupted by the cancer, so they help it grow and spread. Now we can do a lot of modelling of that in experimental animals, in, in, in mouse models of cancer, but sometimes we need to use human cells. What we're trying to do is grow a human tumour. What we routinely have done for many, many years, and deep inside me I've always felt it was wrong, we've grown our cancer cells on basically a special type of plastic. Well, the body is not plastic. Our understanding of biomechanics, tissue engineering, stem cell biology and the tumour microenvironment have advanced enough that we should be able to reconstruct a human tumour that would grow and evolve as a human tumour might in the body. The challenge really for this, this project is that the tumour is such a complicated uh, thing. It's not just one cell type, uh, it develops and it grows, it brings in other cell types. It changes the environment and getting that to happen in the lab is going to be really difficult. I was given the opportunity to apply for a guard from the European Research Council. They said they were looking for something that was really blue skies, that was high risk and high yield and also multidisciplinary. I thought about what would really help my research, a really good model of the cancer I try to find new treatments for and try and understand the biology of. When Fran first approached me, she had a, an idea for what she wanted to do. And I think everybody thought she was a bit mad with this crazy idea of, of growing a tumour in the lab. But actually, it's tissue engineering, and it's something that ourselves at Queen Mary and other places have been doing for a long time. It's just we've never been doing that for a diseased tissue. We've been trying to grow healthy tissue. Interdisciplinary work is a challenge. It's something that at Queen Mary University of London we've been particularly good at and we now have a, an institute of bioengineering which spans uh, across the medical school, science and engineering, bringing in biologists, engineers, material scientists, clinicians. The insight that the, the project will give is how does a tumour develop? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. What we're going to be doing is developing the artificial scaffold. This is where we incorporate the cell work that's happening at Fran's lab with the bioengineering that's happening at Mylend. We're sort of feeding back the mechanics of the tissue into our artificial scaffold to try and optimise it. That's what, a millimetre deep? A millimetre deep, nine millimetres in diameter. The initial load will take 30 seconds. I'm then going to hold the sample for six minutes and record any stress relaxation. I never would have thought I would be working in the field of cancer research, uh, but for this project, a large part is to build this tumour. And for that, they need tissue engineers. We need to give the, the growing cells the right signals. So we're actually going to be giving them mechanical signals in the form of the material that they're surrounded in, making that the same stiffness as the, the natural tumour. That's done there and there's a little bit of drift. Is in some areas of tissue engineering, you put everything together and you build the complete tissue. Here, what we want to do is to put the things together so that the tissue can build itself. That's the real challenge. We just provide the necessary stimuli, the right cells, the right biomechanics, so that it can develop and bioengineer itself. If I get one thing out of the Campbell project, it will be to completely change the way we grow cancer cells and to show that it's important that we do. A big question then is, do you think this will be the size of the Campbell model? The hope is that we will be able to trans 
extrapolate what we learn from this one cancer into others as well. But the critical thing is to focus in on one tumour microenvironment. But if you start doing lots of different cancers, that's where you go wrong. If we are successful, then the first thing is to answer some very basic questions about tumour biology. Do the malignant cells create their microenvironment or does the microenvironment create the malignant cells or is it both? And I think we can use the Campbell model to do that. The Campbell project is going to have impact in two different areas. It's going to provide us with a model for investigating different drugs that can be used to, to treat cancer and it's also going to have impact in the understanding of how tumours develop. A lot of science is if you think too much about it, you'd never do it. You must think very carefully and plan your experiments carefully. But if you think too much, you know, you say, oh no, that's never gonna work. And some of the best scientific experiments are where people have taken that gamble and say, well, I haven't got a clue whether it's gonna work, but I think it's a really good idea and I'm gonna go for it.